We'd like to focus on President Garassi's early days as a so-called baby professor at St. Lawrence University. I think that means someone needs to kiss. His baby, baby professor at St. Lawrence University and to his time as a dean and provost at Hobart. First, thank you. First, we will hear from Stephen Hirschfeld, one of Richard's students at St. Lawrence. Steve is a founding partner with the law firm of Curiale Hirschfeld Kramer in San Francisco. And next, we will hear from a good friend and mentor, the past president of Hobart and William Smith Colleges, Trinity College, and senior consultant with Keeling and Associates, Dr. Richard Hirsch. Gentlemen, please join me at the podium. <laughs> Good evening. So I'm Steve Hirschfeld from uh, San Francisco, and I am here on behalf of the St. Lawrence crew back there. You guys are hiding behind that, those flowers back there. Um, Richard, I can't, oh, there you are. I couldn't really see you. Now, as you, I have a, a bit of a, I have to admit something. I, I, I used to get papers in a little late. Maybe not always late, but close. And I felt I would disappoint you if I actually prepared something in advance, so I have not prepared anything at all to say. So I'll just make a couple of brief comments. That's actually not a joke. So 1975, 1975, I show up in Canton, New York. Uh, if you don't know Canton, you may have heard, you, okay, you know Canton, all right, okay. It's also called the North Country. If you don't know the North Country, just think cold, like damn cold. I mean, really, really cold. I show up there, I thought I was kind of a worldly guy. I, I did. And then I learned some things that I didn't know. I had never heard of the term preppy before. Never heard of it. I didn't know what L.L. Bean was. No, no, seriously. I, had, I didn't know so many people were called trip and skip and chip. No, no, I didn't. And I didn't know that summer and winter were verbs. Those are things too that I... And that was true. And I thought everybody was Jewish. <laughs> or at least ethnic. And then I found out otherwise. So I show up there and I got really lucky because there are a group of students back there that we all sort of were, I guess, outsiders and in some way or another. Now, we could have been Catholic or Jewish or Hispanic or Irish, but we had that in common. It's not much in common, but we had that in common. And we all love politics. And then we all got lucky. We had heard about this guy. Dynamic, smart, young, dashing, a man of the street, we heard. And, seriously, and he wanted to be called Rick. Now that was cool. <laughs> not Richard, not Richard, Rick. That was number one. Number two, yeah. allegedly he was, I want to get this right, a theoretical Marxist. That was cool. Now, I don't know to this day what the hell that is, but it sounded cool. And then number three, hot wife. That was the word. It's true. It, it turned out only the third one was actually true. But, but anyway, we, all kidding aside, we got lucky. Um, we got lucky. We found some, but no, not, not kind of lucky. No, no, seriously, come on. Come on, it's a family show. But seriously, uh, we did. Because we found a guy that was like a soulmate for us. I mean this. Um, he inspired us to think. To think differently. To grab the, the life, life by the throat and go for it. And had very high expectations for us. And we just knew we'd disappoint him if we didn't meet him. Now, whether we did or we didn't, I don't know. But I will tell you this. Most people don't practice what they preach. He did. He did extraordinary things at St. Lawrence and turned what some people call a country club into like this, it always was a great school, but an amazing school. And then he came here. And I've had the, I've had the fortune of hearing the stories over the years of what he's at Wagner, which is absolutely extraordinary. And as proud as I know he is of us, we're more proud of him. And I just can't tell you how happy we are, our St. Lawrence folks, to be here and to tell him how proud and how much we love him. And and how much he means to us. So thank you very much. Thanks.
I'm Dick Hirsch, and I was um, president of Hobart William Smith Colleges um, in 1992 when we were searching for a dean of Hobart. Now, what you need to know is that Hobart and William Smith Colleges are two colleges, a women's college, William Smith and Hobart, a men's college, on the same campus, say, sharing the same president, same board, same faculty, but the women um, had their own student government. They were admitted to William Smith. They graduated from William Smith. They had their own athletic facilities. In essence, it was an attempt, uh, having been uh, founded right near the home of the suffragette movement in Seneca Falls, New York. Um, William Smith was really intended to make sure that women were treated with justice. It was perceived to be a place that women would be equal to men and not second class citizens way before that became the norm in American higher education. Um, and I tell you that because if, when you came to that campus, what you found was that women were in charge. <laughs> And you can imagine 18 year old guys who were really hot stuff in high school running the place, coming to a college which ostensibly was just like St. Lawrence and like Hamilton and like Colgate, small liberal arts college and like Wagner, thinking they were gonna remain um, in the dominant position. <laughs> only to find out that the women were better at them in athletics, in government, in music, in, and, in, and in academics. So the coordinate model was part of the soul of the place, yet we needed a dean of Hobart, of the men's college, who could help the men become men. As, <laughs> that is, move from, not take four years to grow up, but perhaps move up a little bit more quickly. <laughs> And we, we did a national search and you know, the usual stuff, hundreds of applications. Um, and what I found ultimately in, and I knew him as Rick then, um, uh, is that um, he had the attributes of exactly what wanted, um, enthusiasm, vision, passion. Attributes that one does not find in many of the thousands of presidents of the United States. Um, so we celebrate that tonight. And what I want to do tonight is give you a, f a little sense of both his vision and his passion with a couple of little stories, particularly his passion. It's, it's not hidden, of course. Um, one example. We had an alcohol problem, maybe the only cause in the United States that had an alcohol problem. <laughs> And Rick and I were both concerned about this was not a way for people to lead their lives um, uh, to become civically engaged and, and uh, cognitively fluent, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So we, did, we tried everything. And out of desperation, but very passionately, Rick suggested what we do is go downtown, small town, 5,000 people of Geneva, and we would visit each bar, and we would meet with each bar owner, and we would convince each bar owner to do the impossible. Stop serving our underage students alcohol. Now only a romantic and a passionate one of that would think that was a good idea. So you can imagine, you can imagine, the two of us in mid-afternoon on the weekday, in ties and jackets, going into these sleazy bars, introducing ourselves, ordering a beer, and trying to have a conversation about, would you stop serving our students? That didn't work. A second wonderful story about Richard's passion, one that I shared is, we, um, we took our faculty several years in a row on retreats to Toronto. Um, and on the way, in, in buses along the New York State Thruway. And the, after the first two hours, the buses would stop at one of the Thruway rest stops, and people would just rush out of the bus to the Starbucks. Richard and I would rush to the Nathan's hot dog stand. <laughs> this is at nine o'clock in the morning. And while everybody is over here, standing in line, we're ordering three hot dogs each because we both love hot dogs. And standing there, walking out with our hot dogs and be just being made fun of. And we were just gloating like, you, you, this is it. For the following two years, when people got off the bus, they rushed to the Nathan's hot dog stand. 
Richard is, Richard is known nationally as a person clearly committed to the, to the classical version of liberal education, the liberating kind, the kind that really makes us the best of what it means to be human and humane. That's part of his vision, the whole notion of civic engagement. At Hobart, William Smith, he started that, got all kinds of students involved. He was a Pied Piper for that kind. At the same time, as Steve said earlier, high standards, high expectations. But because of his enthusiasm, his energy, his passion, his vision, it wasn't that people did it because they were forced to. They did it because they had a role model. And for the five years that um, we were there, together, not only become best of friends, but we saw somebody who was destined to move in his own direction as president. And I got a call in his fifth year from chairman of the search committee at Wagner asking if I would recommend him as a provost. And I said to him at the time, there would be nobody better. And of course, they had lots of candidates. They were probably down to the final five by the time they called me. And they're going to they're sit there and cut that in half and say, well, of course the president's going to say that about one of his employees. So I said, you know, I've got to figure out some way to convince you that it's not one in five, it's one of one. And I said to him, I'll tell you what, I'm so sure that he's the best person you can hire in the country, because I knew hundreds of people who were applying for that, that I will give you back your money if I'm wrong after one year. <laughs> it's a true story. Okay. But of course, Rick had already promised me two years of that money. <laughs> Several years later, the board chair called me again and said, we're searching for a president. And you did fairly well by us the first time. Who would you recommend? And I said, you, it's silly to have a search. This is, it's outrageous. So he said, uh, well, you know, we're doing, we have to do a national search. We just can't hire from within. You've got to, you've got to sanction this. It's the usual stuff. So I said, I'll make you the same deal. <laughs> There's nobody I know as other presidents or other provosts in the United States who is in the league. You know, run, quick, stop the search, go for it. Because, in fact, I have it on good authority that other places are looking at him. Okay. Well, that's part of the history, of course. The board was bright enough two times in a row, and the rest, of course, is legend. So all I really want to say is this. There's probably, in my own uh, estimation, no better president of any college or university in the United States. There is none who is equally as passionate and as visionary and as caring as I can find. I say that in all sincerity. And I can say that as a, as the, that for me, I am privileged to have him uh, and grateful for him being both a great president and a great friend. Thank you, Rick. Congratulations. Thank you, Steve and Rick. Under the visionary leadership of President Garassi, Wagner has taken its rightful place as a central figure in the national conversation on civic engagement, experiential learning, and transforming communities. One of the national leaders involved in this work, Dr. Carol Geary Schneider, is the president of the American Association of Colleges and University. Universities, excuse me. Listen to what Dr. Schneider has to say about Wagner College and President Garassi's contributions. I'm so sorry uh, I'm not able to join you in person for this richly deserved tribute to Richard Garassi, but I do want to be with you in spirit and to add my own words to this very special occasion. I write this note in part as Richard's long-term friend and admiring colleague, but also, as I am happy to underscore, as one of your honorary degree holders, a proud member of the extended Wagner community, an alumna. 
but I also write as president of a, high, a major higher education association. And with this broad canvas in mind, I want to say plainly that Richard's leadership at Wagner has been pace setting and path breaking. I hold Richard in the highest esteem and have been happy to hold up the Wagner story as the kind of educational breakthrough that vision, leadership, energy, creativity, and sheer grit can achieve. I don't need to tell you that Wagner is not a wealthy college. <laughs> Nor was it a particularly famous college when Richard arrived as your provost. But first as provost and then as your president, he has made Wagner justly famous for educational vision, creativity, and far-reaching service to your neighboring communities on Staten Island. But what has been good for Wagner also has helped move the needle on two important national discussions where movement was indeed sorely needed. First, Wagner has led in redirecting the national discussion about the future of liberal education and the liberal arts. Richard and all of you at Wagner made a courageous public statement that the liberal arts were and should be practical. Second, Wagner helped launch the national movement to make civic engagement and responsibility not just an option available to students, but a core commitment that should influence every student's educational experience and, we hope, their educational and democratic values. This is a model that AAC and you would like to see every campus follow, and it is a model that we ultimately took to the White House. Last year, Richard served on a national task force to examine where civic learning was now and where it should go in the future. The resulting report, entitled A Crucible Moment, College Learning and Democracy's Future, was released at the White House in January and is being discussed all over the country on myriad campuses and innumerable public forums. Wagner is now engaged in, taping, in taking civic engagement to yet another level, placing this entire campus at the center of constructive planning for neighborhoods on Staten Island. While we're not there yet, this kind of commitment will be expected of all colleges, universities, and community colleges. Civic leadership and advancement will be one of the key rationales up there with teaching, learning, and scholarship for place-based educational institutions. We are paying tribute tonight to one of the great direction setters in American higher education. Richard is more than a visionary. Wagner truly is charting new directions. And beyond charting, with you as his partners, Richard is making them happen for Wagner and for American higher education. Sincerely, Carol Geary Schneider. Yeah. Beautiful. And now, please turn your attention to the screens for some very special video greetings from some very important people. Richard, I am so sorry I'm not able to be at your gala celebrating your 10th anniversary as president of Wagner College. But I wanted to send this very special message to say congratulations. Speaking as one president to another, I know how challenging it is and how much persistence and perseverance it requires to continue over a full decade. And you've done such wonderful things for Wagner College. The Wagner plan is still exciting and the ways in which you've used service learning and that natural resource known as New York City to really put Wagner College on the map. It's just been fabulous. Of course, you know you took Lily McNair from Spelman College, but I'm so delighted that she's there as provost assisting you with your vision and your continued leadership. And of course, I could not end my message without saying a special congratulations to your dear wife, Karen, because I know that any president needs someone right there 
by his or her side to provide that kind of support and encouragement during those days when you just don't feel like getting out of bed. So I know that this is a collective success to all the friends and colleagues who have gathered at this gala to celebrate you and your leadership. I say thank you to them. And again, congratulations to you for a wonderful 10 years and looking forward to, I hope, many more. Congratulations. Karen, Richard, this is a historic moment for you, for us, and for Wagner College. We've all come together to honor the both of you for many things, but the three things that come to my mind the easiest are one, the enormous impact that both of you have had on every student at Wagner College. Second, Richard, the incredible changes that you have made with your scholarship and your wisdom across the entire face of higher education. And third, the impact that the two of you have made on our family. We are who we are today very much, all of us, Roger, myself, Emery, and Allie, because the two of you and what you've done for us and our family, we thank you. I want to say a little bit about Karen because I know a lot of people are going to be talking about Richard tonight. Karen has been an outstanding leader in her own right. The New Teachers Academy, clearly very successful program and likely to be modeled all across the country. A real gift to the graduates of Wagner College. I've watched Karen involved in events for Wagner College, whether it be for alumni, whether it be for the community. She's always got great attention to detail, such a gracious host, always making people feel comfortable and welcome, a real tribute to Wagner College. And Richard, uh, what can I say? You're, you're an outstanding leader and an outstanding human being, and we love you both. And Roger's starting to cry. <laughs> we love you, we love you, and uh, you're part of our lives for the rest of our lives. I wish I could join you in celebrating Dr. Richard Garassi and his wife, Karen, on their 10 remarkable years at Widener College. Already, Dr. Garassi has brought so much to the campus and the community. The Widener Plan has become a model for liberal arts education all across America. And you can be especially proud of Dr. Garassi's vision for a college that embraces our 21st century interdependence and strives to become a vibrant member of the global community. More than ever before, we need institutions like the Center for Global Learning to produce a new generation of citizens that is engaged, informed, and inspired to build a better world. So congratulations, Richard and Karen, on your anniversary. I look forward to watching Wagner's growth in the years to come.